Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning. And today my guest is Imogen Ragone, who's an Alexander Technique teacher in, and, web, and web designer in Wilmington, Delaware. And we've done a series of podcasts uh, that um, I've titled Gravity, Support, and Freedom and the Alexander Technique. And uh, this is going to be um, part seven of that series. We've done six so far. And Imogen is going to interview me for this podcast. So Imogen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Robert. I'm very pleased to be here and find out your new, I don't know, findings, thoughts, discoveries, etc. wisdom and discoveries. <laughs> yes. yes. So first of all, let's just start out kind of from the beginning and giving us a definition of the Alexander Technique for anyone who's new to this series. Right. Well, I, I think the best definition I can give related to what we're talking about in this series is that the Alexander Technique is a way of learning how to um, sit, stand, walk, do all the things you do in um, as you live on the surface of the earth where there are some very interesting forces that are acting on you at all times. And learning how to use those forces, how to take advantage of your physical structure, which in my view is perfectly designed to take advantage of those forces. Okay. And so that maybe leads to... Um what are the Could forces? You, yeah, what are the forces? Could you give us maybe just a very brief recap um, yeah. so well, that we know where we're kind of picking up in this podcast? Well, there are uh, phys physicists uh, will say, uh, correctly I assume, that there are really only four fundamental forces in the universe. One of them is called the weak force, and it's responsible for radioactive decay and neutrino interactions. And I don't think really has a lot to do with our day-to-day -day living. So we're going to drop that one. But there are three others. And I, they all have um, significant uh, effects on us. The one that's kind of the most obvious is the gravitational force, um, which draws us down to the center of the earth um, right. man, and um, it's a weak force it's an extremely weak force but because w our nearest neighbor earth is so big it's kind of strong for us personally okay. but in the grand scheme of things it's very weak the second force that we've talked about quite a bit is it's called the strong force or the strong interaction, which is very strong. Um, and it uh, is what keeps us from being at the center of the earth. So we should be very grateful for that one. Is that what <laughs> we're sort of calling support? It could be called our... support. It is yeah. actually the upward push of whatever surface you're uh, sitting or standing on. And it, it has to do with, in a sense, self-preservation of matter, of materials that doesn't want to get distorted by us. And so it tends to try to get back to its pre-distorted state of which we have caused. We won't go into a lot of detail okay. on that because that's in all, you know, that we cover sure. that a lot. The third force that we had not talked about a lot before, but we'll probably talk about it more today is electromagnetic force, which has um, uh, causes electric and magnetic effects, uh, including heat, light, that kind of thing. Okay. And uh, it's it's um, it's as I say, it's not one that we've talked about a whole lot, but I no. but it but it's one that's going to come into play a bit in what we're going to talk about today. Okay. Which is. Um, Okay, yes. <laughs> Which Go is ahead. today we're going to talk about atmospheric pressure. Okay. So to start with, 
atmospheric pressure itself is not a fundamental force. It's a secondary force. Or it, it isn't itself fundamental. Uh, it requires there to be an atmosphere, and for that, you have to have gravity. Okay. Gravity so it's dependent is on totally gravity. dependent on gravity. And in fact, um, if the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on the atmosphere around it were to just drop the tiniest little bit, the atmosphere would drift away and we wouldn't be having any more conversations. And what if it did the opposite? What if it got, got stronger? Um, that's an interesting question. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be good. Uh, it, we might last a little longer, but the, the problem is um, things like water, ice being less dense than water, um, when the rivers freeze over, if there was more ice and the rivers just became ice and our water supply would be affected. Plants, certain plants would have trouble growing. So we might last a little longer, but it would be awkward. Yeah, I, I'd yeah. go for the less, actually, yeah. from every, everything I, I can uh, imagine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it, it needs to be what it is. It's perfectly designed for our planet. And I would also say for people like us and other animals on the surface of the Earth. Uh, th that move around, uh, it, it's, it's absolutely perfect. And we're perfectly organized to make good use of it if we use our intelligence and use our structure as it's designed to be used. That's Very my good. Basic, <laughs> basic thesis. And, of course, that's what the Alexander Technique can, can help with. Yeah. So what specifically about atmospheric pressure have you been sort of mm. learning or well, discovering? Yeah. I, I was uh, suffering under a, a, an illusion about just how strong it is and how okay. much of it there is. Um, my as my uh, thought had been, well, it's a very soft force. We can kind of move through it easily. It doesn't We generally don't notice it. Uh, we've kind of grown up with it. And it doesn't, it seems like a very soft phenomenon. Wouldn't you say that? It, it, true of you? Um, Would you? Well, you know, if you, you, I think you've said that before and it seemed perfectly reasonable yeah, yeah. and related to my experience. Yeah, so. and it is uh, um, perhaps an example of what Alexander himself might have uh. called debauched kinesthetic awareness, although I wouldn't really put it in that category. I think it's we, we, uh, we sense it as being very soft partly because we've grown up with it and partly because it applies in all directions to us. Mm. So um, if you would uh, imagine for a moment walking in water in a swimming pool or in the ocean. Right. Um, I, I did a little experimenting with that very activity this morning, knowing that we were going to talk and I just wanted to okay. verify that walking in water of course the water was up to about half mm, halfway two-thirds up my torso so it's a four-foot pool at its mm -hmm. depth mm -hmm. um, you know certainly very different from walking on the surface of the earth but it doesn't uh, you don't you don't usually sense any pressure from the water uh, it, you feel maybe it, your movements are have a different quality. It takes a little more energy to move and so on. But I didn't sense any pressure from the water itself, even though that's quite a bit stronger, that pressure, than what the atmosphere um Right, I'm trying us. to think about, you know, obviously I did not conduct this experiment <laughs> recently, but I have done this before, and I'm just... Um, so I would think standing in water, I don't really feel the pressure, although I'm aware of the water on me. Yeah. Um, um, but you may. But, be, I, you but, may but be, once you yeah. start to move, or you want to push something through it, you the, you can tell it's more. More it's, effort is needed than 
it's thicker pushing your hand yeah. through the air yeah yeah it's thicker but here's the the interesting thing let's start with an absolute basic uh number that probably a lot of people are familiar with or a term atmospheric pressure mm-hmm. um and atmospheric pressure at at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch now there are a lot of square inches in our body on the surface of our body and every one of them is getting that 14.7 mm-hmm. and if you just think about the the t- the part of our body that is the part of our skin that faces upwards so the top of our heads and our shoulders mm-hmm. well, even just the top of our head i just i did a little research this morning um that's roughly a ton of pressure. It's a small car. And you might think, wow, well, I would notice that. <laughs> um, but the reason, yeah. <laughs> the reason you don't notice it is that there's pr- pretty much an equal amount coming up against your head from below. I mean, it's like your head is caught between up and down, side to side, back to front. This pressure is on you all over. Mm -hmm. And um, the amount of pressure on your back, for example, and your back of your legs is way more than that. Several cars, maybe a few tractor trailer trucks. But there's an equal and opposite coming in from outside, from the other direction. That's really bizarre to think about. Well, my colleague John Macy, who's uh-huh. an Alexander Technique teacher in Omaha, Nebraska, we, we do a lot of work together exploring new ideas. And this came up, uh, has come up a lot recently. And um, the, the analogy could be, it's, it's kind of like we are walking in a giant sea of soup uh, that's quite, um, puts quite a force on us. But we just aren't aware of it. It's because, because it's it, constant. It comes in at all directions, yes. so it's not like it's taking us any particular direction usually. But it, but if you if somehow you could eliminate all of that pressure, uh, say push that that's pushing you forward. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all you had. All you had was stuff pushing you back. You'd mm. be flat on your back as if like hit by a a, a, a tank. I mean, it would be a. Mm. It wouldn't just be a little fall. So, you, you would be. You would. You would be really pushed down. Prob- probably yeah. enough to to do you in. I mean, it's yeah. it's a lot of pressure. So I have a question mm-hmm. because um, we have air inside us we breathe yes right and we should so, be grateful for that because so that got keeps that on the inside as yes well of us. and that yeah. keeps us from collapsing inside uh-huh. air in our our lungs and stomach and inside our mm-hmm. ears and whatever there's air mm-hmm. that pushes out mm-hmm. and so it we don't really sense a whole lot but that uh, kind of soup that we're moving around in does have an effect. Uh, one effect has several effects. One is that it, it stabilizes us a bit. You may notice in the pool, while walking is a little awkward compared to walking on the surface of the earth, slower, needs more work, etc. It's very hard to fall over in the pool. Yes, you, um, you know. but yeah, I'm not as steady in the water as I am on land. Well, you're less likely to, to, to lose your balance in the pool, let's put it that way. Okay, I'm um, just, I, I think that I'm probably thinking more of the movement of the water yeah. rather than... But this pressure, the fact than, that you're yeah. kind of surrounded by yeah. really a very substantial amount of pressure coming at you from all directions, including up. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't matter; it's it's uniform. Um, mm-hmm. That means that it, it it gives a certain stability to being upright. Mm-hmm. So it it may not be that it's just 
you know, balance of the head on top of the neck that keeps us upright, some Alexander teachers might say, or, you know, uh, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. We are, we are kind of corseted in, as it were, by this mm-hmm. force that, that, that keeps us stable. Okay. All right. Now, mm-hmm. this force, this 14.7 pounds per square inch, um, is not all just um, the gra- pull of gravity on the molecules of the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. That that um, number, that that weight that's coming directly down onto you, of, of like the weight of a car, mm-hmm. that's just the gravitational pull on the molecules directly over your head. But there's another aspect of atmospheric pressure, which has to do with the fact that the molecules in the atmosphere are in constant movement. And that movement, I believe, is largely energized by heat. Uh, you might want to ask your husband about that, by the way, because mm-hmm. I think he will know about that. Yeah, he um, probably will. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're moving around, bouncing around, hitting each other and hitting surfaces like us. And they are also a major contributor to this force field that we're in. And so that is a product. Heat, of course, is an electromagnetic uh, force. So, um, so really, all three of these forces have have a pretty significant impact on us. And um, just to, to well to get well, let me let me go into a couple of other things and then take us into the direction everything outside my skin is free, which is oh, something okay. we talked about yeah. earlier. But one of the things about this gravitational pressure is that's what allows us to breathe efficiently without sucking in air. Our system creates a gravity, a, a sorry, a vacuum by drawing our diaphragm down from its rest position. Mm-hmm. And that's the main part, but also a little lifting up and out of our ribs. So that creates a vacuum. In rushes the air with absolutely no help from us, or it can come in with no help mm-hmm. from us, because mm-hmm. it's pushing in at this pretty strong uh, amount of pressure. It's pushing itself. It's being pushed Mm -hmm. right into us. And (laughs) yes, and that's why, and that relates to the idea of people like um, uh, Jessica Wolf, who's an Alexander teacher who's developed the art of breathing method and so on. And people who study breathing, I think there's a growing consensus that the idea really in efficient breathing is getting all the old air out so you have right. plenty of room and then allowing that vacuum to do its thing and draw mm-hmm. in air. So that's that's that, but a little addendum to that. Okay. Which is people typically, when they go from low altitude uh, seashore up on... T- to let's say the Rockies or some mm-hmm. high mountain, they'll say the usual theory of why breathing you don't get as much oxygen uh-huh. is uh, that it's a higher al- it's high it's a higher altitude and there's less oxygen in the air. It turns out that it's totally false. The amount uh-huh. of oxygen in the air is almost exactly the same, but what is different is the pressure. Mm. It's so a, it's not being pushed in quite as yeah significantly. Uh, it can be gre- it can, aggressively or exactly. It's that. less dense. The uh, atmosphere yeah. is less dense, but the amount of oxygen has not changed much. That's the interesting thing. Mm. And so it's the the amount of pressure uh, that would draw would it take care of that inflow uh, is less. So. Okay. There, there's that. Okay, that's, that's sort of very, a, yeah, very interesting. So I guess you're gonna get relate this to how we can direct ourselves. Yes. Um, 
Yes, and that <laughs> is a direction that we ex- we talked about in episode six, the one just uh-huh. before this. Um, the 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 thought everything outside my skin is free, which if you the listener were to try that, I think you'd you'd probably notice uh, some effects. I I use it a lot with students, both Skype and in, and in person, and very few people um, uh, don't notice that, especially if you use it in an activity like walking, where you can monitor, you can have them use it and throw it away and bring back, so you can have them sense mm-hmm. the difference. Sure. Um, and it's a wonderful direction. It's effective, and as I think you pointed out in the last episode, it, it's it's perfect because it doesn't seem like there's any way you can manipulate that. So you just mm-hmm. put it out there and keep out of the way. And I think you said um, when you used it, the expression you used was you felt a little expanded when you used yeah. that direction. And I think you are literally expanded because Hmm. this pressure that's coming in on you is strong. It's coming in at all directions and it's tending to compress you a bit. Of course, you are pressing out against it. And I think the idea of the direction everything outside my myself is free is I I think I said this in the last interview is an indirect way of saying I'm free which is already a pretty good direction tough Mm -hmm. to manipulate but this is maybe even better or um, more powerful precisely because it is indirect Mm -hmm. and the the idea of the atmosphere being free or not free may sound a little weird because you might think even if you understand that it is kind of a thick soup that we're moving mm-hmm. through that it's not going to change right you think well it's pretty pretty stable but think for a moment about sound waves for example that travel through the air and they change the atmospheric the pressure on you they use yeah. they use the air as the medium. Wind, what might seem like the tiniest little breeze, could have many pounds difference in its effect on you, especially if it's right. coming from one direction, um, mm-hmm. intending to push you back. Uh, even if just a tiny breeze, so little you wouldn't even notice it. You want your system to be able to adapt to that. Mm-hmm. And then also, as you're moving through this murky soup, <laughs> you're displacing stuff. You're you're causing little eddies of, you know, you're pushing air around you, little like air around an airplane. You know, little eddies mm-hmm. of air, and, and you're walking in the water, which would be a stronger example. Mm-hmm. You're displacing large amounts of water when you move. And that water has to get around you somehow. And it's the same thing with the, with the atmosphere. So I think I, the basic message, I think, is that this atmosphere that we're in that feels so soft and, and, and cuddly, you know, um, <laughs> and it is in effect, but we still, it, there's a lot there that might be, we might want to know about and come up with some specific strategies for making the best use of. Mm-hmm. It's not it's really, just a soft little thing. It's quite strong. That's, that's the big very point. very interesting. This might be a slight tangent, but my, I'm curious if you use that direction, everything outside my skin is free when you're in water. Yes, it works uh-huh. beautifully. And yeah. especially swimming underwater where you mm-hmm. um it's uh, So you're purely in water, you Yeah, not, if anyone yeah. He, is listening to this um uh, or just regular swimming because you're going to get part of you mm-hmm. has air and part of you is water. Uh do a few strokes um with everything outside me my skin is free and then a few where you're not using a direction and I notice um, a definite change in how my arms move the amount of effort I have to make to move a a certain distance Um, I can experiment with that by swimming underwater um, one way and then another and coming back so I, I try not to do it in a way that would 
you know, be be affected by the fact that after a while, you know, if you, the more you swim, you may need have a bit of an oxygen deficit. Sure, sure. But I've been playing with that. It it feels different, feels softer and easier. Good. And that's a wonderful way to test this in a in a kind of hyper version of the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's kind of um kind of what I've got that's to it. say. But I, <laughs> yeah, well, that's... it's it. But I want to just come back to gravity for a second because sure, of course. Gravity, <laughs> gravity, um, gravity is a very weak force compared to the others. But most physicists would say that it's the most important or it plays a central... Well, here's what one physicist since the four fundamental forces all play central ro- roles in making the universe what it is today. But with respect to the large-scale issues that are of interest to cosmology, it is gravity that is most important. Mm-hmm. Because, one, it, has a, it is very long-ranged. It, it will act between any two pieces of matter in the universe. So it it has a a range that's either infinite or very long. Mm -hmm. And it also has the property that it is always, always attractive between two pieces of matter. The other forces have possibilities of repulsion. Mm -hmm. And that makes them a little less significant. And I think think that maybe um, this guy should have added that for us, since the atmosphere is only there because of gravity, Mm -hmm. um, it kind of elevates this weak force to really being an important one. (laughs) Crucial, yeah. Crucial. Uh, The the phrase that he used, it's like the tortoise and the hare. Gravity is the tortoise, but it always wins the race Mm because it's... It it keeps on going and oh, it always good. goes in the same direction. <laughs> so while there are these other forces that we talked about um, that, that come about in the gravitational field, there wouldn't be a gravitational field if there was no gravity. Mm-hmm. I mean, there wouldn't be an atmosphere. Sorry, it wouldn't be an It'd atmosphere. Be an atmosphere. It, the atmos- yeah. other atmospheric forces like heat, you know, causing the mm-hmm. molecules to bounce around and stuff. But there wouldn't be an atmosphere if there was no gravity. Yeah, So exactly. in a way you could say its secondary effects might at times rival its primary effect. And I'm not sure that's true of the strong force of the surface of the earth, but it might be. I'm, I'm just throwing, I, I don't mm-hmm. know. So that's it. Mm-hmm. And I would add also that if anyone is interested in what we're talking about but hasn't really followed it that well. It, this is part of a, a, a series, and there'll be a link to the page that has the whole series, including this podcast on it. And you mm-hmm. might want to start at the beginning. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I do um, think... Probably work, make more sense. <laughs> and yeah. in working with students, I never, I never introduce these kind of directions um, without a little physics 101. And mm-hmm. I find that students get that pretty quickly. It's not, it's not um, you know, it's, it's really elementary school physics, but it, it's important. <laughs> yeah, but it, I think it's useful to actually know. Yeah. No, I what's agree. Going I on. think if you don't at least have a very, you know, basic understanding then the directions won't mean much to you you're going to say what does this mean or what this is and silly. so therefore it's, you yeah. won't get the benefit yeah. of them exactly yeah. you, you, you'll part of your mind will be whizzing around thinking is this just like everything you know even the direction i'm free is pretty could be seen as sort of esoteric right Mm -hmm. but in fact it's not i mean it's actually very grounded in 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 reality and the and the idea of these forces this is all modern physics and some of it's old-timey physics it's not even it's all very well established physics so very good all right so that's all i gotta say 
<laughs> Great. Fascinating as always. Well, so I will turn things back over to you okay. to close us out. Okay. Well, uh, my, my guest today has been Imogen Ragon, Alex, an Alexander teacher and web designer who lives in Wilmington, Delaware. I'll put a link to her site. If you live in the Wilmington area, give her a call and you can explore some of these ideas with her. So thank you, Imogen. Uh, you're quite welcome. Thank you.